What's up guys, Capital G here. Um, if you saw my title, this is Pro Tips for BK's G Edition. Thank you to my uncle Dub K Dad for letting me use the name and I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, basically, this is uh, a follow-up directly of my no staple video where uh, I was discussing cards. I had a lot of questions, a lot of comments, um, some smart, some not so smart, some trolling, all that type of good shit. So I figured I'd just make a direct follow-up video. Okay. TT is, uh, the main the main thing I heard about TT is people said, well, it stops me from losing the game, you know, and okay, that's great, but you can say that about just about any defensive trap in, um, in your deck. Um, you could compare it to, you can look at it like uh, Gores, Mirror Force, or uh, Solemn Warning, but the difference between those cards and TT is TT is almost always a negative one, and it really erases your field too, so I mean, that really hurts. There isn't really an ideal situation in Yu-Gi-Oh! outside of maybe a few circumstances or if you're going for an OTK, FTK, where your opponent has monsters on the field and you don't, I would feel very threatened. I'd feel in a very bad position just about in any situation if that is the case. And that is when Torrential Tribute really shines. I don't want a card like that. I don't want a card where my opponent has all the momentum and I'm backpedaling for it to be at its best. You can compare that to Cards like Mirror Force or Solemn Warning that can basically, uh, that can help you just keep your fast momentum, keep your tempo. You know, those cards can be used easy. If your opponent has one monster, even if it's like an Emmer's Blade or something, and they're trying to suicide, you know, to get another monster, you can still Mirror Force and keep pressure on the field with your monster on the field. The same thing can be said about Solemn Warning where you can keep the tempo up by attacking with a monster. They try and gorge you, you warning it and keep on going. Okay, so here are the decks where Torrential Tribute, I believe, is a real no-no. I mean, if you decide to run it, that's your business, but my first two decks are pretty obvious. That would be Heroes and, of course, Black Wings. Um, and Black Wings, it's pretty obvious. Uh, there isn't really a time where you're playing Black Wings and you don't want to have a monster on the field. That's just, like, not how the deck operates, so Torrential will always be a neg. And the thing about it is... If you're going to use a card that blows up your own monsters, shouldn't it be Icarus Attack? Because it's just far better. You're getting two for twos. You're getting plus ones off it generally. Um, against heroes, heroes make their advantage through battle. If you're killing your monsters, these monsters aren't easily revivable. Uh, that's the main reason like Fraser Smith didn't run it. Is because you're running it in a deck like Heroes or Gravekeepers where you run 14 or 16 monsters. That's not a high monster count. You blow up one of your monsters, it's just a very bad situation. You negged yourself, and it could be you know a turn or two, maybe three, before you draw another monster. It's not really ideal. Six Sams are the same way. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but you know for them to get their effects, they need other Samurais on the field. Why would you want to erase that with Torrential Tribute? The reason, if, you, if you're worried about Synchros or big pushes, that's why you run other defensive cards. You don't want to erase everything that you worked for, you know? And uh, the fact there's also the Grandmaster aspect, you're turning your Grandmaster off when it dies. Um, there's the bonus of Gateway, of Gateway. It's just, it doesn't make sense in these decks. This is why Torrential Tribute is just, it's such an overrated card. And, you know, you can look at, people try to throw in, oh, well, Capital G, you know, well, some of the XX players or whatever at this YCS ran it. Okay, well, you know. Don't throw top 32 results at me because they're not actually, they're not a great example of what the actual meta was. Um, you take an event like YCS Atlanta, yeah, six Black Wings top, but four of them lost in top 32. So basically, I mean, that basically explains itself. You know, the player who got the furthest, who got in top eight, I know him personally named Chase Simpson, and I'll probably interview him when I see him. He didn't run Torrential Tribute, and I guarantee you if I asked him, he'd probably say exactly what I'm saying because it's terrible in Black Wings. Now, that's not to say that Torrential is a bad card or anything. It is, and it does shine in certain decks and situations, just not in the majority of decks. So don't go throwing it and stun and expect to get great results. In a deck like Plants, I mean, everything is set. So many of the cards are floaters. I mean... Spore and Glow Up Bulb revive themselves. Dandelion gives you tokens. You know, you're playing three, you're playing two to three pot of average. You're playing like 20 something monsters. It's not that big of a deal. Um, Lights Warner and Infernities, pretty much the pretty much the same exact reasoning. Uh, 
the thing about these two decks is these are decks that can kind of pull wins out of their asses where skill goes out the window and luck becomes a huge factor and infernity because you top one card you could potentially go from a field of nothing to a field of three synchros and two barrier light sworn is another deck where a car uh your hand can often can often go from absolute garbage to you play solar recharge you mill a wolf you mill your fourth light sworn name now you drop jd you understand what i'm saying it, it becomes it, they, these are two decks that make nothing out of out of something very easily you know what i mean and torrential tribute works in these decks because they don't need to keep monsters on the field to win because they can just explode I, they can explode in one turn and they can often do it when their hand looks really really bad you know torrential tribute if nothing else basically just extends them one more turn for them to draw that one card that they need and then otk you or pull some dumb bullshit that they shouldn't have that's why tt works in these decks it doesn't work in a deck with like black wings where you're playing two pot of duality two copies of card for black feathers and royal oppression you're not going to pull any games out of your ass when you can barely special summon. The second card was Book of Moon. And I got a lot of criticism on this too. Okay, first off, I never said Book of Moon was bad. Book of Moon's an excellent card. Is Book of Moon a staple? No. Is Book of Moon the new Solemn Judgment? Like in that format where basically if you didn't run Light Sworn, it was almost mandatory by Konami that you ran three Solemn Judgment? No. Um, I mean, first off, there's two decks right here, and these are two very good decks in Fish OTK and Formula Monarchs that shouldn't even look at this card because it's just like not playable in the deck. You want to lock yourself out of Treeborn? Be my guess. I just I don't understand why you're gonna run the deck if you're gonna do that. And then Light Sworn. The reason I don't like Book of Moon and Light Sworn is because you really don't care. Like one of the one of the greatest things about Book of Moon is anti synchro. Light Sworn really doesn't care about if you summon synchros. They have honest. They have uh, Judgment Dragon. Lightsworn can answer synchros fairly easily. The thing Lightsworn cares about is you just building up a very big field and whooping their ass before they can get their plays off. Book of Moon doesn't cover enough ground in that respect for me to recommend it in a deck like that. Card, big broad cards that blow up a lot of stuff, such as Torrential Tribute, Mirror Force, or cards that just completely keep monsters off the field like Warning do. Let's say for Light Sworn's a deck that can pump its field up very easily. I mean, what I mean is you can you can summon a Lumina, then play Solar Recharge, Mill a Wolf, then pitch a card, and summon Garoth. You just went from one monster to three very easily. Um, I mean you went from 1,000 damage to you know about what 5k just by one card. I mean that that's what I mean. When you have decks like that, you basically need cards that keep your opponent from having monsters on the field so that you can do those dumb plays and really just wreck them. You know, cards like Book of Moon are okay, but they don't cover enough ground in that respect. You're not using this card for the type of advantage that Black Wings or Glads would get where you want to attack face downs in decks like White Swarm. That's why I don't like Book in that. I mean, card uh, decks that definitely should run it. And, of course, there are more decks than than not that should be main decking three Book of Moon. You know, decks like Heroes, they make a lot of advantage through just straight-up battle. Black Wings, you have the Shura aspect. You have the Black, you have the Bura aspect where you can poke for game with uh, Soraka or something like that. Soraka would also just be a beater aspect. And then, of course, Glads. We won't explain why Glads need Book of Moon. And, again, in games two and three... There are just so much better cards. If you look at Book of Moon, and let's just take the newest, hottest deck out there, Fish OTK. Outside of um, the super deep sea motherfucker, like, what are you going to Book of Moon in that deck? And even if you do Book of Moon, the super guy, they can just pitch, um, what, a fish board and still OTK you. Or still, yeah, OTK you. You're going to want better side deck cards. You're going to want in game two, you're going to want to pull out Royal Oppression. Fossil Dinah, stuff like that, you know, um, Gores, other things like that. Book of Moon isn't going to help you when they they say, okay, well, I'm not going to go for the OTK. I'm just going to set Lad or something like that. Or I'm going to set uh, a Ronin Toten and a Dupe Frog, and I'm going to stall and stall and stall until I get Giant True Nade, you know. So side deck cards, Effect Baylor, they're much better than leaving your books in cards that you wouldn't want to draw against these decks. You know, if you guys have any questions, I read every single comment that is posted on any one of my videos. 
So, and I respond a lot of times. So, I don't generally respond to like video requests and stuff like that because, you know, I can't make every single video that gets requested, but I will respond to, you know, smart comments and whatnot. So, I hope this helped, guys. I'm not saying that you should be down on these cards or anything. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, get in where you fit in. Um, I mean, I don't understand why you would throw Torrential Tribute into gadgets or why you would throw Book of Moon into, like, Light Sworn. They're just better choices. You know, throw Solemn Warning in, in gadgets and throw Mirror Force in Light Sworn. So, peace, guys. And again, shout out and big ups to Dub K Dad.